everyone. Um, I'm Irene Hook, a master's student of mathematics, and I work at, beside that, I work as a research assistant in the Leibniz Institute for Tropospheric Research. And um, we try to uh, reduce the large chemical kinetic systems. Um, I, I will give a short outline of kinetics and atmospheric chemistry and then present two methods we developed, uh, which are pretty much um, ready to use now, uh, but they have uh, some benefits and some disadvantages. Um, so atmospheric chemistry is um, important for, for air quality, but also for uh, weather and climate in general. Um, and it consists of very simple chemical reactions, um, but very many of them. And so we have these reactions and uh, like 1,000 or 6,000 or even up to 14,000 of such reactions. And we want to know the con concentrations of chemical compounds in the atmosphere in the future. And to predict these concentrations or to calculate them, we have to turn the system into a system of ordinary differential equations. And these systems will look something like this. And they turn out to be very nonlinear and very stiff. And also these chemical compounds can have very, um, can have concentrations of various uh, magnitudes of order. So concentrations can be very small, but still very important. And that's why chemistry is always kind of a problem because the medical observers um, uh, have to be very sophisticated and uh, in the real world of that very slow um, to be accurate. Um, and the solutions of such systems can look uh, something like this. So this is the, uh, the mechanism I showed you is the Robertson mechanism on the left hand side and we see this stiff behavior. So um, the concentration of B is very small, but still very important. And also the time scales uh, vary um, in magnitudes of order. And a mechanism which is capable of displaying something like atmospheric chemistry uh, in reality is the Rackham mechanism. And you see this completely nonlinear behavior on the right hand side. And um, for this reason, uh, reduction of this mechanism is an old problem and there are many methods uh, to do it and we updated one method named lumping um, to be applicable to state-of-the-art mechanisms and we tried machine learning on it with a very simple approach but I think we do it very carefully. Um, okay so first lumping. Uh, this is an, a method which is analytical, so it relies on the structure of the ODEs. Um, it, we, we search for reactions that look very similar, like these two reactions in the, uh, in the second line. And if we are not interested in the concentration of Air 1 uh, particularly, we can uh, create a new species named L which is just the sum of the both of these two species, L1 and L2. And um, the equations turn out to, um, to be summarizable that we only have to consider the concentration of L and then we can delete uh, one equation because we only need the equation for L, not the equations for L1 and L2. Um, we have to search for chemical coherent uh, lumping species uh, in some in some way. And if we do it carefully, uh, I will skip that because of a uh, short time. Um, uh, when we do it uh, and some criteria are, um, are fulfilled, then we can lump these species. And well, the lumping groups in this master chemical mechanism will look something like this. Um, so it is able to find very similar looking chemical compounds. And um, with uh, some thresholds, we get, for example, 60% integration time. I can also uh, put it down to 30%, but the error increases, uh, obviously. Um, we create lump mechanisms which are accurate for many environmental conditions, which you can see here in this various plots. So this is the goal. We want to have 
a mechanism which is capable of displaying accurate behavior in various environmental conditions. It's, just, it's always the important thing and the difficult thing. Um, so this 60% integration time, it's not what we want. Actually, we need very much lower integration time than that. And that's why we thought of, okay, we try machine learning because it's much faster. Uh, but it's a black box uh, and that's why we cannot be we cannot measure the accuracy um, so nice um, but we tried it uh, and as i said very simple so uh, traditionally we feed concentrations of chemical species into the server which is very slow and then we get the next concentrations um, but now we just said okay we now feed the concentrations into a neural network we can evaluate it very fast and then we get simulated concentrations and then we have a look, okay, is it accurate? Um, yeah, some specifications. We use vector mechanisms. So our input space is more than 100 dimensional, which um, drives us far away from random initial conditions. And uh, we have some specific input. Um, and with these specifications, uh, we reach Okay, we have also scale the data, which is very important to regularize the data distribution uh, and help the network learn. Um, we create such a network with uh, some number of neurons, and then we have a massive speed up, even on CPU. So evaluating on a GPU, I think would have uh, very much more speed up. Um, so you can see it here below, up to 100 times faster than the numerical server, which is so this is a speed that we can we can work with, um, but the accuracy is the big problem because uh, it well it's a black box in the network, and uh, right now with the specifications I displayed here, um, we get kind of accurate results. And the very nice thing is that the, the green line you see here are 48 hour predictions of the neural network. So we uh, we feed initial conditions into the network, and then we feed the output of the neural network again into the network 48 times. And it's still pretty accurate. And um, well, this is very nice, but we have to have a look um, for which conditions we reach this accuracy. Um, but yeah, we, we got it uh, to produce pretty accurate long term results and that's what we wanted. So these are two methods. Uh, one is analytically um, understandable. We can have a look into a lump mechanism and see, okay, what is happening there, um, but not so fast. And the second one is machine learning, which is also accurate in the testing data set um, and very much faster. And these are the two methods and we um, try to investigate how much usability there actually is by um, implementing it into bigger models. But we didn't do that uh, uh, yet. That's what I wanted to say. Thank, thanks very much for your attention.